for those of you who are joining in late, I'd like to introduce you to Mark Kessie. Mark is an employee of USA Swimming. He is a sports performance director, yes, or am I? Well, mis- actually, our titles just got changed. So I'm a uh, manager of performance development. Manager of performance development. There we go. So you've heard it here first, new titles, but uh, I've known Mark for a long time, uh, quality individual and a great coach, and we're looking forward to learning something today. So without further ado, Mark, this is your first Zoom call. So what you can do is at the bottom of your screen, you should see something that says share. Uh, okay, got it. Yep. And if, if you click on that, you should be able to share your screen and that'll okay. pop up and you can do your thing. If you want to do an introduction, however you want to do it, go for it. All right. Let's see how this works. Look at that. Are you Perfect. Seeing it? Okay, cool. All right. So um, what we're going to talk about today is just how do we measure success for our teams and, and, We're going to discuss the tools that USA Swimming uh, has in place um, for teams to access to look at some metrics that they can use to measure um, how well they're doing as a program. And, you know, the question is how, how do we measure or how do we make our decisions, right? Are we making our decisions, um, based on some evidence that we have in front of us or are we making our decisions and then trying to fit the evidence to support our decisions and and i think we want to make sure we have some evidence in advance of of how we're making our decisions um so the question is what do we want to measure right what does success look like for a club and I mean, there's an endless list of possibilities on how a club may choose to measure success. It could be how many kids are moving up through the program, whether it's from learn to swim to the team or from one group to another group. It could be just retention, right? How many kids are we keeping in the sport? And I think that's an important factor to look at. It could be, are we making money, right? It might be, you know, how are we serving the community, um, the, the athletes and the families that are in our specific geographic area? It might be how many kids are making a certain level of time standards. Um, we have the IMR and the IMX. So that's another way to look at it. How much are our kids improving? Uh, I heard uh, a well-known coach of multiple Olympians say once, if your kids aren't getting faster, you're not doing a very good job. And we can certainly talk about all the other things that kids may get out of swimming, but the reality is if they're not getting better as swimmers, we're probably not doing a very good job with our athletes. And then the list goes on, right? Is it how many kids are making different championship meets? How about whether kids are going to college and swimming in college? Are they getting, you know, money to swim in college? And then when we look at elite level, right, are we putting kids on the junior team or on the national team? How many kids are making Olympic trials? Are we producing Olympians? And different teams are going to look at it differently. We also have some other rankings that we do of clubs, the club excellence ranking, um, which means you have elite athletes on your team and the virtual club championships, which is designed to measure overall club strength from the ages of 11 on up. And I think the beauty is as a, as a swim team, you get to choose, right? What, um, how do you want to measure your success? So what is your why? What is your purpose of your team? You know, why does the team exist? And it's more about just providing, you know, a great swimming experience for kids. There has to be something deeper. But how does that play into what you're going to measure? What's your vision for the club? You know, if you're, if you're, 
sole purpose to to exist is to create great swimmers for the high school team high school in town then that's a completely different vision than somebody that wants to put athletes on the olympic team and a completely different vision from somebody who may be in an inner city environment and just wants to provide opportunities for kids to stay out of trouble. And who's on board with you on this, right? And I think it's important that we get as many people on board with the vision um, as possible. So we're talking about your athletes, obviously your assistant coaches um, and your parents and the community as a whole, for sure. And any other stakeholders you may be, if you're renting time from uh, an entity or if you are a Y team or um, some other type of institution run team. We want them all on board with the vision and we wanna be able to explain to them what, how we're measuring our success. So we can't be wandering around with our head in the sand and not looking at some type of measure. And I think the reason that uh, at, at times I've seen teams choose not to look at these measures of success or poo-poo the metrics for the fact that they're creating a great experience for their athletes um, is because they're afraid of the judgment that comes with it, right? What if, what if I look at these numbers and I'm not as successful as I think I am, um, or the numbers aren't where I think they should be? And I think the key is you, you want to gather the facts so you know um, where you are and what, what the next steps are um, to move forward. So where you are is where you are. Right, and you can't change that. Those decisions were made long ago, and um, the only thing we can affect is what we do from this point on. So it's not where we're going. And our job as leaders in, in our programs is to provide that vision and create that, um, the concept of a growth mindset, of going beyond what we've been in the past and that there's something bigger out there. I think um, another area we see teams fall into a trap is only measuring themselves against other teams in their area or other teams of the same size, or maybe just wanting to be successful in Minnesota and not looking beyond that to a, a different level. And I love this quote from, from Michelangelo, who used it a lot with my athletes, right? Or, our greatest danger is not that we set our goals too high and we, and we fail, but our, our greatest danger is that we set our goals too low and we achieve them too easily. So let's look at some of the metrics that are out there and some of the ways we can measure, uh, measure our teams. The first one we're gonna look at is that the virtual club championships. So hopefully this will link and come up to the USA Swimming website. And so where we find this on the USA Swimming website is um, we go to times and then on the left, uh, virtual club championship and IMX. Hold up a sec, Mark. It's a, uh, can, I think you've got to go into your sharing settings and then reshare the screen. Uh, okay. So let's figure out how to do that. Yeah, if you stop share first and then redo it, it should come up for you. Okay. All right, I'm not seeing. Okay, so I just stopped it. <laughs> Have you give it a try? Yeah, I'm not. Uh, 
I lost that. Oh, maybe if I click up here. Pin video, stop video. I'm not seeing the uh, that Zoom share screen. So let me close. Oh, here, hold on. Yeah. Close some things here and see no if worries. I can find it again. <sighs> Boy. Oh, here we go. Popped up again. Oh no! Is that me? That's you. <laughs> yep, I did that on I did that on purpose. So I'm going to stop share. There you go. Okay, now, now, the shot. now I think I can get it. All right. Yep. Uh, I want to share screen one now. Share. All right. How's this? Yeah. Bingo. All right, perfect. perfect. Okay, cool. Oh, I see where it is. It's hiding in the top. Yep, it goes up uh, top on that little uh, thing on the top. Yeah. Now I know where it is. Okay, so click on times, click on the far left IMX program and virtual club championships. It's going to open a new page. And then scroll down. And you click on the left VCC search. And on this, you can pick um, any season that you want to. Now I lost my mouse. So we can pick any season. I'm not going to do this year because there are no meets yet, right? So short course yards, and we'll just click on Minnesota. This is kind of nice because uh, Tom Walsh, who's joining us, is from Rochester. Oh, hi, Tom. <laughs> hey, Mark. How are you? Good. Um, so you can go as far back as 2003 if you, if you really were interested in historical data of your club. So we'll click on, um, on this and then we'll do search and it pulls up. This is from um, the 2018-2019 short course. So we'll look at Rochester. And looking at your, um, let's see if I can make this screen a little bit bigger. Looking at your specific numbers. So you can see it, it's going to track all the points you're scoring across the the six categories: sprint free, distance free, and the four three other strokes in the IM. And then, as well as breaking it out, it's single age all the way up to seventeen, eighteen. Um, and what you the great tool on this is not so much, you can scroll down and see exactly who's scoring points for your team. But to me, the tool is looking at these percentages and how do they balance out? So in a perfect world, if you had um, the perfect score, about 23 and a half percent of your points would come from sprint free. Oh, look, you're at 23.3. About 17% would come from distance. So you're a little strong in the distance. You can decide whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. And then we look across the, the rest of the columns, they should all be at 14.8. So you're all you're within a, a percentage point there. And, and those the those three percentage points are made up in 
what we're seeing in the distance free score. And again, if you were a team that wanted to be a sprint team, then you would go, well, we've got too many kids scoring points in distance. We need to fix that, right? But when you're looking at overall athlete development, that may not be a bad thing. Now, um, it's kind of weird that I picked a team that, that was pretty well balanced, but I've gone to some teams where this fly number might be down at six, seven, eight percent. And I specifically went to a team in New York and they were at, um, at the, down at that single digit percentage in fly. And we were talking about their VCC score and ranking. And I said, what's going on in your fly? I noticed you're really low. And the coach said, well, I was hoping you would tell me because we sure swim a lot of fly and our fly score should be way better. <laughs> and I went and watched practice. And yeah, they were swimming a lot of fly, but they were swimming a lot of crappy fly, like really poor strokes, especially through their age group program. And we talked about the fact that, that practicing – crappy fly is not going to improve butterfly. So gave them some ideas on how, you know, to better prepare those 11 to 14 year olds for butterfly. And lo and behold, they brought their score up. And then we can look at the percentages on the, um, kind of on the other, on the other column of based on the age groups. And the reason the percentages are lower for the 12 and unders is there are fewer events that are tracked. And again, I think what jumps out at me is it's, you know, Rochester is a pretty well-balanced team. The one area where it seems to be a little bit down, I believe is 15 year old boys, right? And you can look at that and say they're down at 6%. Well, why is that? Well, we've only got, you know, 500 points in distance free and backstroke. And that may be a function of not having enough 15 year old boys to fill out the entire lineup. So it's two swimmers per event and no swimmer can score in more than four events. And the cool thing about this is there's a uh, part of our computer program in swims that every, um, every couple of days, it will go through and do the billion calculations to determine what the best lineup for your team is, right? So you can look at what, um, you know, where you are percentage wise, and obviously you can, can justify being low in 15 year old boys, but say, but also look at it and say, okay, how can we get more of those kids into the team? Or can we spread them out better through those events? And the other way that I've seen teams use this number and the ranking is to set a goal of, you know, where do we want to be as a team? So right now, nationally, you're 112th. Um, in your LSC, you're fourth. If we go back, um, I close this out and we go back. So you can see that you're at 195. Riptide was at 196. Minnetonka was at 2000. And you got Aqua Jets. So there's only four, you know, five and a half thousand points away from second place uh, if, if you're Rochester um, Swim Club. And the cool thing about this score is for all your 11 and over swimmers, Anytime you go to a meet and kids do best times, they're contributing to the overall team score and how successful um, the team can be. And so it's more than just the fastest kid on your team. It may be that, you know, eighth, ninth, tenth girl in your 11 year old girls that's actually you know, her improvement in an event is moving up the team score. And so it's a way to encourage everybody to contribute. Um, I've seen some teams that 
that post the entire report after every meet. Um, they'll post it on their bulletin board for the kids to look at and see where they're scoring points and to see how, how much the team has improved. Um, so it's just a neat tool with a lot of information you can choose um, you know, to use in whatever way um, you want to. And again, the way we got to it um, is we started out on the homepage. I know we had a couple other people join us. So if you're not familiar with the Virtual Club Championship, uh, we click on times, click on VCC, and then on VCC search. And then you can scroll down and pick out any season you want, going all the way back to 2003, 2004, separated long course and short course. And then you can measure it by zone, LSC, however you want to do it. Mark, do you find that there are teams that are better long course than they are short course? I mean, if they maybe have access to long course you or know, any weird wide disparity? I don't think we've ever done a study in terms of, of does access to long course water make you better at long course swimming? I mean, uh, and that would be an interesting kind of parameter to plug in and look at. Um, so I'll make a note of that and uh, and see if uh, if that's something we could could possibly add in. There are certainly teams that have more participation, either short course or long course, than other teams. Um, but I think it's relatively stable um, in terms of of where teams are. Um, it's all about it's really about how many kids you get to swim in meets and what type of events you get to them to swim in those meets. So teams so with fewer long course meet opportunities probably are not going to score as well. Um, so do you know how many kids you need to cover all of the age groups and all of the scoring? Like for 11, 12 girls, how many, how many kids do you need versus 13 and over kids? How many kids do you need? A really good question. I have not ever looked at that. Um, but we could figure it out pretty quick. Uh, and the reason I ask is because as I've been looking at metrics for our clubs, it right. seems like when you get down to like six or 700, that's when you start seeing like where it's teams, they just can't seem to cover every event. Sure. Sure. So, um, what we're looking at is, so for the 11 and 12 year olds, um, we've got uh, two, let's see, uh, per age group, we've got five, six, seven, eight events, right? and times two swimmers per event, 16. So four swimmers, theoretically you could do it with four 11 year olds, four 12 year old girls, okay? okay. And then four 11 year old boys, four 12 year old boys. For the 13 and overs, we do all 13 events. Um, and we probably need to change. Well, we, I was just looking we, at that. Yeah, we we actually do all fourteen events, so oh. we all we've always included that odd distance event. So certainly there were so we've got twenty eight. So we need seven in each age group there. Um, cool. A minimum of seven, right? And mm -hmm. they obviously have to. Four of them have to have to have swum each of the events in order to get a score. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mark, um, your perfect list, um, does mm -hmm. percentage on that, is that right. just equal breakdown, not for the idea, or is that a, based on a certain number of points, or is it? Oh, for me, no, that's exactly just like balanced. if you, based on the number of events available, if you, we're scoring in each area 
an equal number of points, then that's how your, your points would break out. And I think to me, that's something we added really um, kind of right at the, when we um, first created the, um, the program, we added it about six months in because I, when I was looking at the report, I said, said it would really be good to, to see those percentages break out to, you know, in the age groups, a lot of it's going to be based on, hey, we only have two 15-year-old boys, so we're only going to score so many points. But I think looking across the, um, the different strokes categories and the sprint-free, distance-free broken out, um, it really can identify some strengths or weaknesses uh, in the program. So it's not based on any um, type of level of score. Um, it's simply based on um, just on if you wanted to score equally in every age group and in every, you wanted to have a team that was good and in every category of stroke, then that, was, that would be what your percentages would look like. Very cool. any, other, any other questions before we move on? I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint here, I think. Man, you're like a pro now. Look, look at you moving I, around on this I thing. I am, man. I've, got, I've like got it figured out. And there's also a chat function. So I'll keep the, the chat open. And if anybody has any questions, if you click chat, um, just type them in. And then I'll kind of relay them on if you're shy or you don't want to talk or whatever. So. Okay, why is it not? All right, are we back to the PowerPoint? Can you guys see it? Yep, you're back. Okay, so there's that perfect score. I just included it in the PowerPoint for people to see. The next area is, we're gonna go back to the website, but the club portal. And the way the club portal is designed is really to be a dashboard, it's kind of similar to the dashboard in your car, where you can get a quick picture of a bunch of different metrics on your team. Um, so we'll hop to that. I guess I'm gonna have to switch my share again, if I can find that. Where'd it go? It's not at the top of my screen anymore. What'd you do last time to make that show up, John? Here, I'll, uh... <laughs> okay. All right. You try. It says, and okay. if I get the DOF, we'll process it. But it's still pending. Okay. All right, we got it. So basically we're on the web page and we're gonna do a sign in and I'm gonna sign in again as Rochester Swim Club. So nobody else copy this down. So you've got to be signed in to your deck pass account to be able to access the club portal. Uh -oh. That's a problem. What did I do wrong? Another go. Okay. Hang on a second. Let me pull up that email again. And <laughs> so now everybody can see what it is. Beautiful. Uh, 
just in case anybody's interested, that's the same password I use for pretty much every single thing in my life. So have at it. Go for it. <laughs> I'm kidding. Not really. <laughs> there we go. So now we're signed in. We're going to go to John John's deck pass. Band, do not let on deck. That's... Uh, so then we're going to go to club portal reports. Everybody see how I did that? And then club administrator login. Sure, this is right, John. It was working yesterday. I'm going to try something a little different, see if I can log it in on my. Okay. Sorry, bear with me for a sec. Okay. We thought we had this all figured out. We did. I had it all working yesterday, which is kind of typical. Let's try this again. <laughs> that was acting all weird yesterday. I'm gonna, all right, so I go to my deck pass. Here we go. Yeah, I'm going to share my screen, and okay. then we'll just do it from mine. Okay. I wonder why it wouldn't let me in. I think, well, the, the problem is, is I have three of these accounts. So um, can everybody see what I'm doing? Did my deck pass come up? Yes. Okay. So now you want so, to click on uh, on that club portal report, which is right. Oh, oh, never mind. Go right to the here. yeah. Go to the dashboard. Yeah. Okay. That's probably what I. Sh uh, all right, you got to go back. Sorry. That's okay. I got it right here. Okay. Come on. Is that the right email, JB? Uh, no. Well, maybe that's what I had wrong, too, the wrong. Hmm. Still doesn't like it. No, that's weird. Oh, you know what? This is the. Let me try one. Let me try one more. Apologies. <laughs> Again, it well, you know, and and then I had a board of directors email as well, so I had four different things going at once at one point. It was like you've got to be kidding me. If you're not as important as John and you only have one way to log in, then... You know what? Consider yourself lucky because then you have to deal with all this stuff, so... Hmm. This probably won't work, but we'll keep trying. 
that it was working yesterday too. I don't know. That's right. And I know it was working for Autumn as well. Hmm. All right, I can go in a different way. Okay. Um, can you unshare? Yep. I can take... log in a minute, Tonka's too, if you guys want. Oh. Okay, this is just going to take me a second. Maybe. I'm logged in if you guys want me to pull up mine. I'm actually logged in too, so I can share mine. All right, share yours back, John. Okay, no worries. And you know what's interesting is that, Mark, I was able to log in by doing a search of the club portal. So I don't know if I'm doing an end around on the website or something, but that's kind of weird how. All right. So, I, so this is what pops up, the screen that pops up. Can you scroll down on it, John, just a little bit? Yeah. So you can see all the different information that's there. If you click on 2019, then it will populate. So what we have here is um, on the top, average rates of improvement. Then we have membership counts and retention. Then uh, on the bottom left, time standard achievement. And then a series of canned reports that you can pull up. So let's pull up just the club level membership trends. So what you see here is a, a uh, an eight year rolling history of registrations um, for um, the team. So you can see number of athletes broken down in a bunch of different ways, the retention percentages, um, and then break down male versus female, how many kids in each uh, single age or on the team, what those percentages look like as well. Keep scrolling down there, John. How long kids have been, how many kids have been in for the club with X number of years, the, an, an ethnicity breakdown, seasonal athletes, if you have that, coaches, registered officials, so just a lot of general information there. Um, click on back to the report list, John. So that's an easy way to get a bunch of data in a report. And you can also get it if you were interested in comparing percentages to the LSC level or the national level. 
you can also print those and see what's going on um, with that. Um, going down to the IMX IMR swim report. So let's click on last season. You want IMX or IMR? Uh, do IMX. And then view report. So this is going to print out all your athletes age nine and above. Or sorry, all your athletes. And whether or not they have swum the events to get an IMX score. And then we'll, uh, it's a great way, like if you're doing meet entries and you want to see what kids are missing a, you know, a score in an event, if, if, if getting athletes to have an IMX score is a priority for you, my opinion, it should be. Um, but you can see what event it is they're missing uh, and look for opportunities to enter them in that event. And as well as it will give you, uh, obviously, if they've swum all five events, it will give you their score on the far right-hand column. And it will go all the way up. So this is basically every athlete in your program. So a great tool, uh, again, in my opinion, to, to see what kids are missing. Go back to the report list. And then let's go club IMX statistics. St yeah, that word. Uh, so this gives you your stats of your entire team, and it will give you the last six, uh, sorry, the last um, six years, both, whoa, there you go, there you go. Um, short course and long course will tell you how many kids achieved the score and what percentages that is of your entire team. Um, it will also tell you which kids are scoring an average of over 400 points per event um, down on the, on the bottom end. And then it also gives you the same thing for the I am ready, which is the shorter distance events um, in each age group. So the I am X, I am extreme was designed to promote kids swimming the longest distance uh, events in each stroke and the I am. The IMR was the companion piece um, to create a basically a, a pentathlon type score for um, the shorter events. And we can go back to the report list. We can go back down to those reports. And then uh, if you click on Club IMX, go ahead and click on that, John. And again, uh, you got to pick the, you got to pick last year. Oh, that's right. Sorry. Getting ahead of myself. We've used these at, at banquets in the past when I was coaching at Rochester. Yeah, to me, it's a great recognition thing that you can give to your athletes. So basically, it's going to give each child will, who's completed it will get their score. Um, and then it will also tell them their ranking um, within the club, within the LSC, within the zone, within the nation. And it's signed by our national team managing director, Lindsay Mintenko. So it's pretty cool. If you're looking for a way to award this, um, and basically all you have to do then is, you know, hook them up to your printer or send them to a print shop. And we used to print them up on nice card stock and give them out to the to the kids. Um, the next of the canned reports down there, um, this will tell you uh, the spl splashes by event. Go ahead and click on that, John. Okay. 
and it will tell you um, how many kids swam each event or how many splashes you had in each event during that season. So if you want to look at, at areas of, you know, maybe that we need to be putting more emphasis on a certain event, um, and obviously this is by age, broken up by age group. So for some of the events, it's, you know, with the younger kids, we're not going to see 400 IMs probably. Again, just a way for you to look at how are you, you know, how are you managing the entries? Are you giving kids opportunities in those events? Are there places you want to emphasize events that maybe, you know, we all have those blind spots where we may not enter a kid or a group of kids in a certain event. And it just kind of points that information out to you. Go back. Then uh, let's see the VCC statistics. If you want to get a quick overview of how your team has done in that VCC rankings over the last four years, over the last quad, it will give you. that information where your overall ranking was. And we can see, John, you, you asked me that question about our team's consistent short course and long course. And here we see with, uh, at least with Rochester Swim Club, pretty consistent numbers um, and rankings uh, based on um, the, the short course and long course. You can see that it takes fewer points in long course to, to place higher just because, again, not as many meets possibly and not as many teams taking advantage of those, those opportunities. I'd never seen this report before. That's really interesting. Yeah, it's, it's cool to look at and cool to track your um, kind of your progress. And then it will tell you, as you go down through here, how many points you're scoring in each age group in each set of events. Cool. Probably too much information in some cases. I mean, that's one of the challenges, I think, when you look at metrics, right, is what's important and what's not important. Um, let's just, um, we'll focus now on the graphs. Um, and let's go ahead and click, John, if you can click on detail in the upper right-hand corner there. Now, yep. keep going further to the right there. So this is going to give the average rate of improvement. Right now, we're looking at short course yards. Um, average rate of improvement across the entire team now in the different events. The line... So some things you can adjust on here. The, the columns are the club percentages and the lines are the national percentages. You can also, uh, as John's doing here, mess with the age groups. Um, a lot of times you can, if you look at um, – the percentages, they can be very skewed by your 10 and under athletes because they have a higher percentage of improvement. But if you wanted to look at just, go ahead and scroll it to 11 and 12. If you just wanted to look at your 11 and 12, so now you have to go up and on the left, hit refresh. Now this is just the 11 and 12s on the team and how they're comparing to what we see in the average rate of improvement. So it's based on the athlete's best time. Um, John, if you can scroll down just a little bit. We have a couple different um, way to look at this. Um, 
You can do average of fastest times. Each athlete is measured by comparing their fastest time this season to their fastest time in the prior season. Or you could do average of average times, which I don't know how much information that gives you, but it, you're looking for consistency of performance um, in comparison from season to season. Does it scroll down anymore, John? I can't remember if there's a third. No, that's all okay. I got. Okay. Um, and then let's go up. We can pick, you can see up here on the right-hand side, we can pick just guys, just girls. We can pick strokes. We can pick single events to compare it to. If you click on, the, um, on that drop-down box under level with the lines, John, where it says national right now, Right. Up a little. No, up. Oh, up. got it. Yep. Okay, you can pair your, your team, LSC zone, national, or none if you just wanted to look at overall percentages. And always refresh after you make a yeah, change. Yeah, you've got to refresh. Anytime you change a parameter, right, you've got to refresh yep. it. Got it. Okay. Um. And then you can also, um, you can obviously switch courses on, down in the left under the chart. It has the filters for short course yards, short long course meters, short course meters. If you also wanted to look at just how much do our swimmers who have A times and below competed, right? You just uncheck all those other boxes. Again, refresh. And then conversely, if you want to look at, well, how did just our fast swimmers do? Nothing because they're 11 12s. Oh, <laughs> oops. So let's go 11 to 21. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> Come on, Rochester Swim Club. What are you doing? There you go. Butterflies. Interesting. Yeah, so a lot of information here. Then if you click on, click on the view chart details up towards the top there, it will actually tell you, look at each athlete, what their previous year best time was and what their um, current year's best time was and what wow. meets. So that, that's like you're generating an entire report for your whole team. So you can really dive into the, the minutia here with your athletes. Wow. Yeah, it's a ton of information. Now, what you would do with that information, that's, I mean, that becomes the question. And I think the important thing is, going back to the beginning of the pre presentation when we talked about you decide what you want to be and you decide what you want to measure. What are the, what are the important things um, to measure? So do you ever see, Mark, do you ever see people who are using maybe a, a specific training tool like maybe they've just gotten like three buckets or something or they've got a couple mm -hmm. of sprint racks and they start applying it during a season sure would you use this i mean is that a way that you would use to measure possibly yeah i think you could look at at the events that you would consider maybe power events you know maybe 50 free 100 free you know the fly events maybe the sprint sprint breast and sprint backstroke events, maybe 2IM, and, you know, look at, at if you see that any big changes that are occurring, um, you know, between the averages of, of the years that you weren't using it and since you began using it. So the, the, all the different filtering capabilities give you um, 
an opportunity to get as specific as you want or be as general as you want. Um, you know, if you're looking at, at coach effectiveness, right, you may, if that coach is working with a specific age group, you may want to look at, you know, is there a problem in the developmental part of our program, right? Our overall team averages seem right on what the national is doing, but maybe our 10 and under percentages aren't great. Um, the unfortunate thing is if you're a multi-site team, we don't have the capability yet to break it out by site or by practice group. So if you have Got mixed it. practice groups, it becomes a little harder. I think as we start to, I guess, get more aligned with Team Unify and, and possibly even with Active, that somehow we can import training group designations or site designations into SWIMS that, um, eventually we may get to that point with the data. It's just a question of, you know, it's not gonna be, it's only as accurate as the data that we're able to get, right? So if only half your team is designated, um, you know, has their practice group designated correctly, then your results aren't gonna be that good. Um, and Mark, I, I just gave you control of, the, uh, of my mouse as well, so see if you can, Oh, wow. Something. Okay, cool. How slick is this? All right, so now we're learning something. I didn't something. even know you could do that. I didn't either. I just figured it out. So. <laughs> All right. So now I'm, I'm driving the bus. Membership counts. I mean, this one's pretty – these two are pretty um, standard in terms of, of what you want to – or what you're able to look at. But as you can see here – Rochester up till 2018 was very heavy on the 12 and unders and now a little more balanced. Now that could be a good thing or a bad thing. Um, you know, that, that you guys that are living it would know whether that was, you know, what, what was causing that, right? But now you have a graphic presentation of it and then, um, also break it out actually by listing all the swimmers which is kind of interesting that we can go that deep in um, to it oh. same thing with retention just looking at the numbers um, now, how you retain more than 100% of your 13 and overs, I'm not sure how that happens. But um, so, and it, we can also look at um, comparing it to, let's just compare it to LSC club average. So we can see from looking at, at just these two different charts, retention and membership. So Rochester is obviously one of the bigger teams in Minnesota swimming. Um, and then when you look at the retention, okay, they're, they were above average. I mean, we'll actually tell you the numbers, the percentages on there when you uh, hover over the, the bar. So retention was above average in 17 and 18 and maybe slipped a little here uh, in, in the last year in 2019. And again, uh, it's up to you all to figure out what's causing that. But if you just say, oh, we're pretty good at retaining swimmers, it's not really giving you um, as much information as I think you need. And then you can, you can just pick ages. So how many 13-year-olds 
Let's go, how many 13, 14s did we have and did we retain? So again, comparing, this is 13 year olds, this is 14 year olds. I wonder if that overlap is maybe kids who age up during the year. It is could that, be. Must be something weird. Could be. In I'll USA Swimming's retention number here is like 89%, right? Right, so if we look at, um, we can compare it to national. So yeah, somewhere 80, 80 to 90% there. So national average, um, national average size of club is 110 and they have 13, 13 year olds on their team. And they've got 11, 14 year olds on the average size club. Kind of interesting information. Don't know what you know you want to do with it, but like I said, you can get caught in the definitely into the weeds in this. The last I one I want to look at here is time standard achievement. So this is going to tell you um, of the athletes on your team what time standard level they've achieved. And so this one gets a little tougher to read um, if we print it, it becomes a little better. But I think this is one where I would kind of pull out a lot of the information. And the other thing you can do is just um, switch it to only look at a couple seasons, right? Oh, so now go. you get a little bit clearer look at the – um, the percentages for that season. And again, we can compare it, compare it to central zone. And that's one you're going to have, you're going to want to uh, definitely see in a little more detail. And I, so I would, again, look at eliminating some of the categories on there and we can same thing switch ages Let's look at seven to twelve and we'll look at a little less data Take out the lines. And again, you can view chart details and see who those swimmers are that are creating that bar and what time standard they achieve. Any questions? Not Thank here. You. I have to run to another meeting. I really appreciate you going through this. Okay. This has been wonderful. Yeah, absolutely, Thomas. And if you have any questions, don't don't hesitate to to reach out. Oh. I guess my, my one big question is, a lot of data, um, I think it's, uh, what do we do with the data going forward? Sure, and I think it's, it's you, 
to me, you pick out a few key places and then see what, how you're measuring up and develop strategies to improve. And actually, I'm going to oh. – how do I – if I exit out of this and go back to sharing mine, John. So yeah, here I'll um okay, I'm gonna stop this. Go ahead. So this is just uh, pictures. Is this showing up now? The mm -hmm. So how yep. do you use it? So interesting um, kind of case study is Northern Kentucky Clippers. Um, after many years of being a silver medal club, they made gold status in 2017. And as Norm kind of explains here, they, they set that goal to reach gold medal status and they figured out how many points they had to score by looking at previous years of club excellence results and how many swims that would take. Um, and I don't remember the exact numbers. I apologize for that. But let's say it's, it's 35 swims that are um, above the junior national level. Um, for them to reach a gold medal status. And they put it out in front of the kids and said, okay, this is our goal. We're going to become a gold medal club. Everybody's in. Here are the time standards that you have to make. Here's how the points are calculated. And the kids basically took ownership of it. And they inspired each other and, and uh, Norm was saying that, that he was at, uh, he wasn't at um, like their LSC championship because he was, had enough for some reason and a couple like 13, 14 year old kids made their junior cuts and he was getting texts from the older kids saying, how many points is that swim worth coach? How many points is that swim worth? And it just really um, kind of fired up the whole team. So I think um, when you look at it, first of all, obviously communicate it to the coaches um, and get buy-in from them on, on looking at these metrics and using these metrics to measure what, what's going on with the athletes and then start to figure out what can you share with the athletes. Um, to me, I would, I would start with just with the VCC and say, how can we improve our VCC score? Okay, sit down with the kids and say, you know, all the 11 and older swimmers and, and talk to them about how every time you do a best time, our VCC score is going to go up. It might go up by five points. It might go up by 75 points. And, you know, in the course of a meet, you could see, you know, maybe 5,000 point improvement in your overall VCC score if everybody swam great. Um, so I think it's, it, it really is, you've got to decide what things you want to measure and where you want to be as a club. Uh, and don't be afraid to, to dream big, just like we tell the swimmers, right? If you don't make a goal, doesn't mean you failed. It just means you weren't, aren't there yet. You're on the path to it. And I think working with other teams and working within the LSC, and I think that's, you know, one of the things that we've seen in the LSCs that have put people like JB in place is much more collaboration amongst the coaches and much less jealousy and rivalry before the t between the teams because – if everybody's working to get better, then um, everybody's going to improve. And so that idea, when you, we looked at the VCC scores and we had those three teams that were in within 5,000 points of each other, there could be some really good rivalry there 
in a in a fun collaborative way of how can we move up you know and then once you have that data and have analyzed the areas that you want to improve in then it's spending some time to really strategize and look at those obstacles norm mentioned in that article that they sought out more long course competition opportunities so they could make times that would allow them to score in the virtual club championships. So what are your challenges? Pool too crowded? Hopefully not that crowded. Pool not nice enough? Okay, do we need a new pool? Whoop, I went a little fast there, right? Is it, we need more coaches, better coaches, more individualized attention? Do we need more dollars? You know, we all, there's a limited amount of resources, so you got to figure out what you're going to send those at. And always be willing to make adjustments and use that data to drive the decisions that you're making, because we all know that it never works out the way we plan. And you want to enjoy the journey always, and make sure you celebrate your successes. That's all I got, John, unless there are questions that people have. That was great. Um, I think that there are a couple things here. One is just actually using this as a vehicle to disseminate this information with Zoom. Um, I think that getting this message out to people, I really appreciate you taking the time because we couldn't oh, have I, done this a couple of years pleasure. ago. Oh, this is awesome. Um, uh, again, it, it we really appreciate you taking the time to help us out because I'm willing to bet you most of our teams don't realize this is available to them. Um, if they have questions, who should they reach out to? If they have, if they can't get the club portal to work, for example, what do you um, recommend? The, the best person for them to reach out to would be Randy Julian initially. Okay. Um, but really any of us here in, in um, team services, um, are more than capable of helping them, but but Randy's obviously as the central zone um, um, program development manager. He's he's your your main point of contact. Um, but I, I'm glad to help in any way I can. Um, and this was fun. I I enjoyed it. I learned a lot about Zoom and. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, we'll do I it again. that technology. So, yeah, let's pick another topic and we can do it again. Sounds awesome. Thank and you maybe so we'll much, do, Mark. I'll do a little rehearsal and uh, we won't have the technical glitches. Ha. I still want to know. I still want to know how we got that, uh, how I was able to log in the one way, but not the other way. I'll have to yeah, give that's it weird. I don't yeah. Know. I have to give Shane a call. So, <laughs> all <laughs> <Anyway>. right. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. Much appreciated. All right. Take care. Have a good one. Bye bye. Bye.